and welcome to Catalan News. A huge leap forward for independence. This is how, from prison, the Catalan Vice President, Oriol Junqueras, has assessed the actions of the Catalan government in these tense past few months. He has also made some self-criticism about recent events and has hinted who might be the new Catalan president. Meanwhile, President Puigdemont is still in Brussels and continues to hold meetings ahead of his hearing in court on Friday. Here at Catalan News, we will get you the latest on his activity and we'll also talk to a Belgian journalist about what Puigdemont's stay means for his country. Let's begin. The Catalan Vice President, Oriol Junqueras, has admitted that it was naive not to foresee Spain's repression to avoid Catalan independence. In a letter written from prison, he also said that independence is now closer than before, but there's still a long way to go. His party, Esquerra Republicana, is wrapping up its candidacy, as the other parties are also doing. They must have their list completed in two days' time. Catalan parties have in the past few days been announcing some of the candidates on their election lists. Today, Esquerra Republicana announced that the Catalan Parliament President, Carme Forcadell, will stand as one of its main candidates. Forcadell is one of the Catalan officials under most pressure from the Spanish judiciary for allowing independence debates in the chamber. In fact, Forcadell spent a night in prison last week and was only released after paying €150,000 bail. The Spanish judiciary is keeping a Esquerra leader and Catalan Vice President Uriol Junqueras locked up. Yet this has not prevented him from continuing to campaign for independence. Junqueras sent a letter to Esquerra Republicana members from prison on Wednesday in which he says the events of recent months have meant a huge leap forward for the creation of a Catalan state. For him, the October 1st referendum and the declaration of independence have put Catalonia on the map for Europe and the world. And this, he claims, is the first step towards recognition. Junqueras was also self-critical. He admitted in his letter that the Catalan executive was too naive to think the Spanish state would not dare to apply such levels of repression. He also acknowledged that Puigdemont's cabinet had not expected that the EU would tolerate police violence or direct rule of Catalonia. Esquerra Republicana is expected to include a roadmap to independence in its manifesto. The party leads the polls with Junqueras as its candidate for president. Should the party come out on top while Junqueras is still in prison, he hinted in the letter that number two on the list, Marta Rovira, would preside over the Catalan government. That would mean the first female president for the six centuries old institution. Another female contender, Inés Arimadas, who is head of the opposition, has a very different approach to the election. Yo le digo a los señores eh, Junqueras y Puigdemont que la única fábrica que tiene que abandonar Cataluña, la única, es la fábrica de hacer mentiras de los señores de Junts pel Sí y la CUP. She is the only female candidate for president so far. The CUP party has not yet unveiled its list, and while Together for Catalonia is led by Puigdemont, it is still not known whether he would be able to take office should he win. And we now go to Brussels, because Puigdemont continues to receive visitors from Catalonia who travel there to show support for him and his government. Puigdemont and his four ministers in exile met today with members of En de Pau, Catalan Four on a peace footing. It's a platform created in the aftermath of the October 1st referendum to promote non-violence and peaceful demonstrations. The politicians and the activists met for about 30 minutes in a friendly atmosphere. They all underlined the importance of sharing non-violence as a fundamental political principle, leaving ideologies aside. Impeo de Pau criticised the persecution of Catalan leaders by the Spanish government. When Puigdemont spoke, he encouraged the platform to reach out to all parties and organisations in the political spectrum. I demand that we continue to persist in this diffusion of the culture of violence and that we can be compromised by all the actors politics that concur in the elections of the 21st of December, all the actors politics that have something to do with it, that are compromised explicitly amb aquesta manera de resoldre conflictes o d'encarar els desafiaments del futur. Anunciar l'excepció, la cultura de persecució, pràcticament la cultura macartista contra el nostre govern, però també contra 700 alcaldes, amb 1.066 ferits, i recordar que van tan lluny en el seu embogiment repressiu que estan convertint la no violència activa, el més ferm dels compromisos pacifistes, en un delicte de rebel·lió. A Belgian judge ruled 10 days ago that while the authorities decide on their extradition, there is no need for them to be held in custody. It has arisen that among the reasons for not doing so was that putting them behind bars would have caused irreparable damage. While waiting for the decision on the extradition, Puigdemont took part in a political gathering in Brussels last week. Around 200 mayors travelled from Catalonia and also took part. But now the Spanish Ministry of Finance has called for the Court of Auditors prosecutor to open an investigation. 
They want to find out where the public money has been spent on the event. While judicial activity against the Catalan pro-independence movement goes on, not everyone in Spain's ruling party, the People's Party, is in favour of all the judges' decisions against the Catalan leaders. In fact, Santiago Fizas, a Catalan MEP for the People's Party, claimed today that he wishes that no pro-independence leaders were in prison. He also expressed hope for the eight Catalan leaders to be released soon in order that they can campaign ahead of the December 21st election in the same conditions as the other parties. A mi no m'agrada que ningú sigui a la presó, vull dir que tant de bo que puguin sortir el més aviat possible. Crec que és bo per tots, també és bo per les eleccions. Són decisions judicials, és evident que el govern no té res a veure amb això, però crec que és millor que estiguin al carrer. Crec que anar a la presó no és el millor, i en aquest cas concret encara menys, sobretot per el tema de fer una campanya. Crec que és millor poder fer campanya des de fora, però això no depèn del que jo decideixi, del que a mi m'agradaria ni del que li agradi al govern espanyol. Puigdemont's situació a Bèlgium ha atret l'atenció de la societat belgica i també de la seva mèdia. En ordre de saber més sobre com el país està reaccionant a Puigdemont's estat, parlem ara amb Jurek Kuskevich. Ha estat el senyor director de la Sua Newspaper i ha interviewat el president Puigdemont la setmana passada. Bona tarda, senyor Kuskevich. Hola. How does the Belgian society feel about the fact that Carlos Puigdemont is in Belgium right now? You know, Belgians are curious because it's quite an event, it's a political event to have a, a, a political leader which in a way is an exile in Belgium, so it's an international story, so everyone is very, very curious and Belgians are also very cu curious, interested in, you know, what's happening and why he, why he is here. Uh, so that's affecting uh, the public, uh, the public opinion, and also because uh, they know that for the government it might be a problem that there is an independentist party, which is the main uh, coalition partner of the government, uh, who is uh, in solidarity normally, at least officially, with uh, with the Catalan independentists. Uh, so it is uh, it is special, and ev everyone asks question about whether the NVA will support him, help him, or not. What do you think about the fact that the Spanish government is trying to tackle the political situation in Catalonia through the judiciary? And what does Belgian society think about it? I think that, you know, uh, all Belgians don't think all the same, but I think that there's one, uh, uh, one uh, thing that most of the Belgians think, it is that you don't solve this kind of problems uh, in the judicial uh, uh, way. Uh, the judicial might be at some stages a tool uh, for the politicians uh, to advance and to solve some intermediary problems, but basically it's not uh, in front of you with the judge that you solve political problems of communities trying to live together. Do you think that the Belgian Prime Minister regrets showing support to Catalonia and criticizing the Spanish government after the October 1st referendum? Uh, no, he does not regret it. He said it publicly and he told it to me because I spoke to him a, a few times uh, uh, as well. He does not regret it. Uh, 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 mostly, I think, because first, he, he, since the beginning, he said that, you know, he never put into question the uh, constitutional order of Spain. Uh, he just said that violence is not the way and he said that you solve this problem, what I earlier said, is that you solve this kind of problems, the political problems, you solve politically and, and not uh, uh, in, in, in front uh, of, of the judge. Uh, and also I think he knows very well that what he said is broadly shared by, by the Belgians, whether they are in favor of independentism, of independence of Catalonia, which is not the case, most Belgians don't think that independence within uh, the European Union is, uh, is a good idea, uh, but they know very much from their own experience that you solve these things only by the, by a com with a compromise, by discussing, by negotiating, and sometimes it takes a long time with a lot of drama, but you solve this politically, and that's why he knows that he supported in, in what he said. Thank you, Mr. Kuskevich. Thank you. Goodbye. Barcelona is taking a step ahead in the fight against HIV. 
From today, the city is home to a centre specialised in a medication that actually prevents the virus. The medication hasn't been approved countrywide yet, but Catalonia's capital has already got a place for people who've decided to take the pill on their own. The PrEP pill is an innovative new medication in the fight against a worldwide HIV-AIDS health crisis. When taken daily, it greatly reduces the chances of contracting the virus. The drug is not yet available in Spain, but the BCN PrEP point is already one step ahead. This Barcelona community center is the first in Europe of its kind. Its aims are to provide support to those individuals who already take the drug and further research its effects. It was opened by BCN Checkpoint, a community-based entity dedicated to detecting and preventing the virus within the gay and transgender community. And, according to them, using the medication has the potential to save lives and to lift stigma and suspicion as well. La persona amb la que tinc relacions sexuals pot ser que estigui diagnosticada, pot ser que no ho estigui, pot ser que tingui la càrrega viral detectable o que no l'hi tingui, però a mi ja no m'incombeix res de tot això. Per tant, m'ha permès normalitzar no només les relacions sexuals, sinó les relacions humanes amb altres persones. Working towards the safe advancement of the PrEP treatment is one of the organization's strategies in fighting the epidemic. BCN PrEP Point already has some studies in the works for the new medication, in which around 100 people are set to participate. The center maintains that a smaller number is indeed necessary for accurate results. Other studies have shown that, when taken correctly, PrEP can decrease the risk of infection by as much as 90%. Barcelona also hosted today a meeting with the mayors of around 40 European major cities. Their goal was to make a common front against violent extremism. Barcelona's mayor, Ada Colau, inaugurated the summit. She said that while their aim is to build safer cities, diversity and openness to the world also have to continue. The mayors taking part include from Bilbao in the Basque Country and Tirana, Albania's capital. Among the dangers in terms of violent extremism, Colau mentioned the August 17th Barcelona attacks, as well as increasing far-right actions. Several demonstrations have taken place in the past weeks in Catalonia to reject fascist violence. Let's move on now to a creative initiative for children to get closer to culture. This week, silence reigned in the school Bos de la Parodia in Girona, in northern Catalonia. Cultural projects surrounding silence are being hosted in some of the school spaces. Exhibitions, shows and master classes mark this initiative. For five days, students work on image, movement and music. At the end, students will have to discuss what kind of silence symbolises their school. That's all for our show today. We leave you with some images of rock art found recently in southern Catalonia, near the river Ebre. The paintings have been hidden for 8,000 years and show a hunting scene. Thank you for watching and see you tomorrow.